Hey animal enthusiasts and pet hobbyists, it's Joelle here and today I'm going to go over the care and husbandry for the common side blotch lizard, Uta stansburiana. Let's get into it. The common side blotch lizard is a small, brown to gray lizard with small, slightly killed scales on the back. They get their common name from the distinctive dark black to blue mark on the sides behind their forelimbs. These guys are typically found in semi-arid regions and deserts where temperatures are warm and prefer open rocky to sandy areas with scattered vegetation. They could be considered saxiclus, meaning they are rock dwellers and live among them. Males are often seen doing push-ups to display their territory of claimed boulders. As adults, males are distinguished by having three color morphs consisting of either orange-throated, yellow-throated, or blue-throated, where they have a breeding pattern similar to the rock-paper-scissors game. Considering their natural environment, this is my setup which is largely rocky desert themed. If you'd like to see how I set this up, I will put the link to my video in the description for the desert rock background DIY. I currently have two side blotch lizards named Sylvester and Squishy, which are juveniles. So far, I've had them for 7 months, and in the wild they are typically very short-lived with lifespans roughly about a year. The smaller juveniles will do fine in a 10 gallon tank with lots of climbing space and rocks. Fully grown adults will do well in a 20 to 25 gallon high tank. For the substrate, I prefer to use a natural fine desert sand, keeping it just deep enough for the lizards to burrow if they'd like. Similar to how I use the excavator clay for the background, this can also be used as a substrate as a mat on the bottom. Lastly, repti carpet or sand mats can also be used, but it just won't look as natural. Hides with wood or rocks should also be provided on the cool and warm side. Other decorations such as sandblasted grape wood and branches are great for offering climbing enrichment. When it comes to heating and lighting, these guys spend lots of time sunbathing. Using a basking bulb, there should be a thermal gradient with a hot side and a cool side of the tank. The basking spot should have a temperature between 90 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit, and a cool side 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. You should try to avoid any under tank heaters and especially heat rocks. In the wild, I have observed these guys out sunbathing in temperatures as high as 110 degrees Fahrenheit. You should use an infrared temperature gun to monitor the temperature as these are most accurate. There should also be a UVB bulb for vitamin D synthesis and proper metabolism of calcium. Ideally, a T5 strip light will emit the most UVB. But if you can get the basking spot close enough to the UVB bulb, it should be able to absorb a good portion. UVB bulbs should also be replaced every 6 months. Food should also be dusted with calcium and vitamin D3, but we will get into that later. When it comes to humidity, it should be kept low and there is no need for misting. This is also the reason I don't have a water bowl in the tank at all times. Instead, about twice a week, I'll place the water bowl on the cool side and pour the water into it so that it appears to be moving. Typically, these guys will only be interested in water if it is trickling or moving. Once they are no longer licking or drinking the water, you can remove it for next time. In terms of their diet, they are primarily insectivorous and will eat a variety of insects. In the wild, they will eat small grasshoppers, spiders, ticks, beetles, and harvester ants. I like to offer a variety including crickets, dubia roaches, mealworms, and waxworms. I typically dust the insects with calcium D3 two to three times a week and vitamin dust once or twice a week. Overall, I try to feed them once every day a few insects. I've also noticed that they are great at removing sand from their mouth, which likely reduces the risk of impaction. These guys are very smart and will even eat from your hand once enough trust has been built up. They are generally not as handleable compared to other species, so try to keep interactions minimal. If you do need to handle your lizard, try to do so gently and support its body to avoid injury. Aside from that, you should regularly clean the enclosure, removing any waste and uneaten food, and always keep an eye on the lizard's health and behavior. Any unusual changes such as loss of appetite, lethargy, or skin discoloration can be signs of illness. But yeah guys, that is essentially how I keep my common side blotch lizards. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.